All right, David Harry here, and in this video, I'm going to show you what I consider to be a pretty serious problem with the new iPhone 15 Pro Max, and that's basically its inability to be able to power certain external storage devices. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you the problem with the iPhone 15 Pro Max. From here on in, I'll just call it the iPhone, and I will show you that this problem does not exist on the iPad mini 6th gen or an iPad Pro M2. Now one thing you have to consider here is that the iPad mini here, the 6th gen version, also has USB-C on it. However, the USB-C on the iPad mini 6 is actually technically a lesser capable variant of USB-C than what the actual iPhones got on it. So this actually makes the problem even worse as far as I'm concerned because even the older Mini 6 with its older CPU and its kind of lesser specified USB-C port can actually do the job properly. So what I'm gonna do first of all then is to show you the issue with the iPhone and then I will show you that that issue doesn't exist with these two iPads. Now I would also strongly recommend that if you are considering buying one of these iPhones and especially if you are planning on doing external recording with it for say ProRes files then you might want to watch the whole of this video just to get a really good idea of what this particular problem is. Okay so what I've got here is an external SSD. Now what this is it's an Acasis enclosure which is Thunderbolt 4 and USB 4 compatible and obviously USB 4 is also compatible backwards with all other variations of USB as long as you can connect via the C port and also importantly inside this particular enclosure I've got a Western Digital SN850X which is an NVMe SSD now the combination of that particular SSD in this particular enclosure gives you the fastest possible drive that you can use externally over Thunderbolt or USB-C on any Apple Mac or basically any Apple device realistically that's got USB-C or Thunderbolt. Now the reason why I'm pointing this out and I'm going to stress it is because this is the type of drive that you would be using for say video production on your Mac. So it is not unreasonable to suggest that you would also want to use one of these drives to extract the files from the iPad and then take the drive into post where you can either then just dump the files from the drive to the Mac or indeed because it is such a fast drive you can edit directly straight from the drive. Now I've had to point all that out because obviously this is the big problem for me because obviously I do a lot of editing on my MacBook and this particular drive is fantastic for that. Okay so what I'm going to show you first of all is I've got a USB 4 cable here. Hold on wait there actually let me just make a clear this is a standard USB-C cable and this is a Thunderbolt 4 cable which is also basically USB 4. Now the thing with the Thunderbolt cable it is totally backwards compatible to like the USB 4 standard and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do here first of all is to plug the drive into the phone and I'm using the Thunderbolt 4 cable here. Now what I'm going to do is go to the file manager. Now as we're going to see, the drive just will not pop up here in the locations. Now I'll just talk a little bit just so we can give it time to try and populate the locations list and show the drive. However, I can guarantee you it just won't pop up. Now, just so that we know um, what it is, I won't be able to get focus here, but we'll see a green light there on the SSD. So we actually know that it is actually receiving power but at this point in time, what we can see is that the drive has not shown up in the list here. Now, if you give us a moment, what I'm going to do, in fact, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do as much of this in real time as possible, just so that you know exactly what's going on. So there's the Thunderbolt 4 cable there. Now, there is the standard C cable. So in case anyone might be thinking, well, hold on, it could be a problem with the cable. And of course, these things do happen. This is a separate cable and it's a C cable. So let me just pop that in there. Now, just quickly, I will show you the green light is on there on the SSD. So we definitely know that the SSD is basically switched on. But once again, we're not going to see anything pop up here. 
Now, this definitely rules out the fact that, you know, it's the cable, which it isn't because I know it's not because it works on the other two devices. But as you can see, it is not popping up. And for anybody who's interested as well, this particular drive here is formatted to APFS, which is totally compatible with all the Apple, you know, devices such as the phones and the tablets. Obviously, APFS because it's the preferred format for the Macs as well. But as we can see here, nothing's happening, so it's not picking it up. However, now what I'm going to do is... I will now use a, a powered hub, okay? So what I've got here is a USB-C hub, which has got power into it. Now, what I'm gonna do is connect, it. I'm gonna connect the SSD to an available port on this hub. I'm sorry I can't get too close on these because I've already got focus on the camera. However, it's obvious what type of ports I'm using because of the types of cables. Anyway, so there is, the port there that I've now plugged the drive into. Now, what I'm gonna do here is plug the actual hub into the phone, and what we're gonna see is that eventually, well, shortly, the drive will pop up. I'm sorry about this, I've just got a load of mess on the table. Okay, so that's plugged in, and as you can see there, the iPhone's just said it's picking up power, obviously because it's a powered hub, so it passes power through. Now, after a few seconds here, we will see that the Thunderbolt drive actually, t you know, shows up. There we go. So as you can see there, 4TB Thunderbolt. Let me just pop on that. As we can see, these are just files that are on that Thunderbolt drive there. So what we've identified with here is that the phone definitely does not have enough power on its own to directly connect and power this particular drive. Now, if you give me a moment, let me just get the iPad mini into the shot. Okay, so this is obviously the iPad mini 6 here. So I'm just gonna connect them all together again. So obviously the same SSD here, the same Thunderbolt 4 cable. I'm not gonna do anything extraneous. I'll just show you that it does actually pick it up. So if I go onto the file browser there, and then I'm just gonna connect the SSD to the Mac, uh, sorry, to the Apple iPad mini. And let me just pop that in there. Now it will take like a few seconds and stuff. I think maybe there's like a little bit of a handshake routine that goes on just so, you know, it sees like the table of contents and stuff like that. You have to remember, it's highly likely that the types of drives, so there we go, uh, four terabyte Thunderbolts. It's highly likely that drives like this have got like tons and tons of data on them. So, you know, I'm not kind of gonna get on Apple's case, the fact that it takes a little while for the drive to be identified and pop up. But as you can see clearly there, that is all working and that is even using the Thunderbolt 4 cable as well which obviously is you know C compliant so now let me just go over onto the iPad Pro okay so this is the iPad Pro here and like I said before this is an M2 which means that this natively is Thunderbolt however like I had already explained this particular drive here is Thunderbolt 3 Thunderbolt 4 and USB 4 which means it's backwards compatible which is the reason why you know the iPad mini picked it up as well because the iPad mini doesn't have Thunderbolt that only has USB-C okay so let me just get into this once again I'm not going to just like spend a lot of time here but let me just open up the file browser let me actually go to there and then again I'll just plug it in there's no need for me to show you the green lights either on the drive when it's plugged into the iPads only because if it pops up here you know the green lights on anyway Okay, so once again, it'll take a few seconds. It's just gonna basically query the drive. I think it is the table of contents. There you go. So the four TBs, you know, popped up there. I think what it does, I think it does actually query like, you know, table of contents and stuff like that. In fact, because if I go onto here, I mean, there's a ton of like, like video files in all of these folders. These are like backups and all kinds of things going on here. So yet there are thousands of files on there, which is the reason why I do think it just takes a little bit of time to show up. Anyway, let me just jump back to the iPhone just for an end summary here. Okay, so I'll try and summarize this as best as possible. Although what I've already shown you will actually explain everything that you need to know. But what's going on here is that I have got the absolute fastest SSD that you can use on any device 
be that Thunderbolt or USB-C. Now, of course, a lot of people are going to want to use this particular phone, which obviously is the Pro Max. They're going to want to use this for the likes of video production, in which case you will end up with like hundreds of gigabytes worth of ProRes files if that's what you're doing on the phone. And the thing what you're going to want to do is get it off the phone as fast as possible or the files off as fast as possible and then get those files either editable straight away from an external SSD like this one or plug it into a Mac and then put the files into the Mac for editing and stuff like that. Now, it's not just going to affect people who are going to be using massive video files or massive ProRes files. It could just be anything that you want to do where you need to offload or put data on or move data about, you know, copy and back up and stuff like that. But as we've clearly seen here, this particular phone does not have enough power to actually drive all of the SSDs that are going to be getting plugged into it. And there's nothing really special about this SSD because as we could see, even the iPad Mini 6 picked it up. Now, what's really telling there as well? The iPad Mini 6 from memory, I think, has got an A15 processor in it. It's also on USB-C. Now, this particular phone is obviously on the A17 Pro, but the USB-C on this is actually twice as fast as the one on the iPad Mini. Now, the speed doesn't come into play with this as far as connectivity is concerned or the ability to see a drive. However, you know, it's fair to say that the USB see on this phone is supposedly technically better than the one that is on the iPad mini 6. So again, you know, that that to me is just kind of ringing alarm bells. So for anybody who's like, you know, kind of bought the Pro or the Pro Max because they want that extra speed off the USB-C port, that is one thing. But if that port can't actually power all of your USB, you know, USB-C devices for storage, then that's going to be a massive problem for someone who gets caught out with that, especially if they're out in the field somewhere, you know, filming stuff and they need to back up quickly to free up space on the phone or whatever. Anyway, yeah, I, I think I've made the point really clear here. And unfortunately, there is going to be another video with another problem to do with the Pro Max, and that's actually its speed as well. I'm getting like really slow speeds on this with compatible SSDs that I'm plugging into it, where if I plug that SSD into something else, another Mac product, it's working a lot faster. It's almost as if this phone is working at 480 megabits per second, just like the standard 15 and the 15 plus do. It's not, do it's not doing that, obviously, but it feels that way. So there are issues to do with the, the actual data rate for transferring data as well. But anyway, that's for another the video okay so look if you've liked the video please give it a thumbs up uh, a sub to the channel would be awesome i'm going to be doing a ton more stuff to do with the iphones also the ipad pros and some more mac stuff on this channel as well so if you're into this type of stuff yeah defo keep an eye on the channel and what have you i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now